All right, folks, welcome back. Today we are multitasking. We are continuing to take on these higher stakes as well as demoing uh, a new deck here, the painted deck. Something that's slightly awkward about the progression system in this game. Uh, if you want to play on the higher stakes, the higher difficulty settings, you need to beat all of the lower ones in order. And, you know, that kind of makes sense. You know, if you want to play on the high difficulty setting, you sort of have to prove yourself. Uh, on the lower difficulty settings however you know if there's more than one deck that you're interested in you know maybe you like a couple different decks you need to we beat all of the stakes on each deck individually and so 15 decks times eight stakes that's 120 wins not counting however many losses that you have in between and so i've said uh, for this series, our completionist series, I won't be recording all of those runs. I will just kind of give you a sampling across different stakes and different decks to sort of, you know, get the idea of what's going on um, and sort of spare you from all of the grindy nonsense. So right now we'll jump right in with the black stake. This introduces the concept of eternal jokers, jokers that can't be sold. And so we've demonstrated in the past, we're constantly shuffling jokers in and out of our lineup. We're constantly selling and buying new ones. Um, and that's because different jokers have different value depending on, you know, different points in the run. And, you know, the first joker that you pick up, uh, the best is probably a plus molt joker, right? And so your scoring hands start out at four molt. And if you add, plus 12 on top of that, that's, uh, you know, four times base. If you have plus 20 on top of that from one of these sinful jokers, that's, you know, times six what your base was. And then, you know, sort of in the mid game, the chips jokers are, are very good. You know, once you already have some plus molt, then if you add, you know, another 100, 150 chips on top of that multiplied by that plus molt, you know, that's going to give you a ton of points in the mid game. Um, and then when you get to the end game, in the end game, once you have the leveled up uh, hands from the planet cards, now you have a much higher base molt, much higher base chips. And then so those chips jokers, those molt jokers are less valuable. It's mostly the X molt jokers, the multiplicative bonuses rather than the additive bonus, the X molt jokers that are going to carry us through the end game. And so with these jokers that can't be sold, each time you see one in a shop, you have to think about, okay, if I buy this and I can't sell it, this will be in my final lineup. And so we've had the experience now, we've gotten a bunch of wins so far, and we kind of know what does a winning lineup look like. And so you ask yourself for this eternal joker right now, is this the kind of joker which is part of a winning lineup? Um, maybe it is. Maybe, you know, I already have a joker of this kind. Maybe I already have a chips joker. Do I want a second chips joker, um, for example? Now, another component of this is you have the jokers cannot be destroyed. And for the most part, this is actually going to be a benefit. And so if we go to, you know, the spectral cards, we've got the, let's see here, the Ankh destroys your jokers, the Hex destroys your jokers. And so if you have uh, eternal jokers, they can't be destroyed. That could be a benefit to you. Or if we go to the, what is it? Uh, there it is. Madness. Madness destroys your jokers. If your jokers are eternal, they can't be destroyed. So that could be a benefit to you. Um, the, where is it? The sacrificial dagger or the ceremonial dagger gives you a, a reward for destroying jokers. Um, I will note here, if your joker can't be destroyed, if your joker is eternal, then the dagger doesn't get bigger. It only gets bigger if it successfully destroys. Um, whereas the madness keeps getting bigger It gets bigger first and then it destroys after and so if you have no jokers It won't destroy anything if you have eternal jokers, then it won't destroy any of those uh, Also with these eternals we should note if you get 
uh, a random joker from let's say the judgment tarot card or maybe the wraith uh, spectral card that give you random jokers spawn those can spawn as eternals and so maybe those are a little bit risky um, if you haven't had the opportunity to experiment with this yet um, it comes out to about one third so about one in three of these jokers are eternal and sometimes you know if they're eternal and i can't sell it then that joker is a blank and so think about it that way think about um when i'm shopping about one third of the jokers are going to be blanks now that i can't buy we should also keep in mind uh you know these stakes are stacking on top of each other and so we have all of these challenges uh previously previously we demonstrated uh, the red stake, what it does is you start with three less dollars. That's it. That's all that it does. Kind of. Um, it does kind of, uh, you know, affect all of these future small blinds. The no reward money is a small difference, you know, just three less dollars on all of those small blinds. And you still get your money from hands. You still get your money from interest. But that three dollars difference could mean that skips are more viable skips are you know you're not missing out on as much value if these small blinds are not giving you money anyway um, or another thing to think about you know with the black stake here with the eternal jokers you don't want to get let's say an eternal value generating joker value generating jokers you want to generate value early and then you want to sell them later if they show up as eternal then that's too risky. That is not the kind of joker that is going to contribute to a winning lineup. And this decision of, you know, what makes a winning lineup, what doesn't make a winning lineup, um, it's also tied here to the green stake. So the green stake makes the anti-scaling higher, you know, it makes all the numbers bigger for the score thresholds. And so we said with the green stake, this doesn't really affect anti one through four or sorry, anti one through three, it's not until you get to anti four that it's actually significantly different. And then it stays, you know, larger all the way through the final boss. The final boss is significantly bigger than it was previously. And so with the higher scoring threshold needed, this question of what Joker is good enough for the final lineup, now it has to be a little bit more selective in order to meet those scoring demands. And so, uh, with the black stake here, you know, I was going through the decks and I was trying to think about, um, you know, what, you know, might be good here. So here's a situation where the black deck might actually be one of the easier ones. And so because you have the extra joker slot, you can afford to take an eternal joker and you can afford for it to be blank in the end game because you can win with just four or five jokers. You don't need all six of these joker slots. It's okay to take one of these value jittering jokers uh, that's eternal on the black deck. Um, one of the harder decks I think is going to be the painted deck because here we've got minus one joker slot. We really need to be selective. What are the exact four jokers that are going to win it for us? Um, when we're playing on the black stake here. We have no room for extras. Now with the painted deck, okay, you know, setting aside black stake, if we're just looking at the, at the painted deck here, minus one joker slot in exchange for plus two hand size. And so there is this joker, there is the troubadour that gives you plus two hand size. So that joker slot gives you plus two hand size. And most of the time what you're doing with the extra hand size is you're using that to sculpt better hands, find better hands. And we said better hands are worth more points. And so sometimes that extra hand size is actually worth more points, the same as what would be a scoring joker. Um, or maybe even more directly with the extra hand size, we can use uh, steel cards with the extra hand size. We can use the jokers that care about holding cards in hand. So the Baron giving you molt for your kings, uh, the queen, uh, what is it, the shoot the moon, the queen joker giving you plus 13 molt for each of your queens held in hand. So those types of things we could be looking for. The mime doubling, uh, re-triggering all of our held in hand abilities. Gold cards giving us money. 
So, you know, the painted deck, really what we're looking at is you have less Joker slots, so you have less scoring coming from your Joker, Joker slots. You want to focus on how do I get scoring out of my cards themselves, out of maybe my enhanced cards, playing better cards in order to get more scoring. Um, anyway, what I was trying to say about the Troubadour is, you know, when you get later into the game, once you start thinning out your deck and once you start uh, manipulating your deck, it becomes easier for you to find the good stuff, as it were. And so if you were playing a normal run and you had a Troubadour, you might sell it. In the end game, I don't need the extra hand sculpting ability. I can find my hand, no problem. The problem is I may need more scoring in the end. And so that's what makes the painted deck hard. That's what makes the painted deck hard on uh, this green stake and higher is that you have higher scoring needs. And so it's harder to achieve that with fewer joker slots. Let's give it a try. All right, in the first uh, ante here, since we don't have the small blind reward, we should check for the skip tag. Skip tag gives us the extra hand size. We said, you know, a common way to use this is if I skipped all the way to the boss, the extra three hand size makes it easier for me to beat the boss if the boss is particularly challenging. Um, but for us here, we're just going to play normally. Um, so, you know, this is weird here if we're playing on the painted deck, we have the extra cards here, which means you can discard five while holding on to five um, is kind of the power of the extra hand size. So what am I looking for here? I'm looking for, you know, maybe this kind of straight or this kind of flush almost wins in one, but maybe I'm looking for a slightly bigger diamond. So let's throw away all of these and still hold on to five diamonds. Um, or maybe we will get a full house. Uh, I don't mind that at all. Um, because the extra hand size makes it easier for you to you know, sculpt your hands, Jokers that reward you for having extra discards left over, jokers that reward you for having extra hands left over, those could be more valuable. Uh, here we've got Supernova, doesn't do a whole lot for us. We've got Banana, and what we demonstrated in the last one, we said always bet on Banana. All right, so with this now, you know, almost any hand will win, right? If we're getting the plus uh, 15 molt here. So let's go ahead and full house is fine. Uh, we know that is 15,000, sorry, 1,500, almost 1,600, but let's call it 1,500. Um, that's going to beat this boss. And then the next round is 1,000. And then the next round after that is 1,500. So we're good so far, which means um, I don't need to buy anything here. Uh, if I wanted to consider buying something, you know, maybe I could think about the castle. The castle is one of these, you know, sort of scaling jokers. It gives us plus chips. So this is in the mid game going to be very powerful. Maybe it falls off in the end game, but maybe, you know, if we level it up enough, we can get it to a point where it's good even late game. And so of the different scaling jokers that give you chips, this is the uncommon one. This is going to be the more powerful one. And if this is asking us each round to discard a specific suit, you know, in this case clubs, the extra hand size is going to help with that. So I think castle is great in general and it's great, uh, especially on the painted deck where you have limited joker slots and we will save our money. We don't get any interest right away, but we do want to get uh, our interest threshold eventually. All right, diamonds are debuffed, and at the same time, we're trying to discard clubs. So we can go ahead and discard clubs and diamonds. Looking for, you know, maybe here's spades. So we already have the flush 
that we are going to win with. We're going to win with a flush pretty easily. Um, I'm going to look for more clubs. All right, so some consideration here for if I wanted to level up my castle more, I could. Um, here's five cards. I can just play these to get rid of them. And then after redrawing, maybe I draw some clubs and I can discard some clubs. You know, maybe um, with nine clubs left in the deck, maybe I get one or two. A little bit extra scaling on my castle. Um, I don't think we need to go that hard right now. Um, we can go ahead with either a flush or it turns out that this is a royal flush. Or, you know, that's technically a straight flush. All right, unfortunately, the banana is still with us. It didn't die on us. That's fine, I guess. I'll allow it. Um, here, we've got kind of our scoring needs met with the banana. We're already on track there. So let's just keep holding for interest here. Here's that eight ball showing up as our first eternal. This is one of those value generating jokers. Um, and it's a common one. So this is one that's easily replaceable. This is one that you don't typically hold on to for very long and so clearly not what we're looking for um, small blind let's take a look at the skip here uh, re-rolls are cheaper um, we're good with our current joker setup here so we'll go ahead um, and just play it we need to discard spades and then we need to look for uh, i guess we already have hearts so let's go for hearts uh, by the way, if you didn't already know this, the way that the castle works is each round, it picks a random card in your deck and takes the suit of whatever that card is. And so later on in the game, if your deck is like 50% spades, then it will be spades more often, uh, which is good because then you can grow it faster. Um, so kind of in general, the more suit changes you apply to your deck, the easier it is to grow the castle kind of is how it works um, and then also uh, wild cards are very good wild cards will count as any suit and so rather than playing wild cards as part of a flush or a straight flush you can use them specifically for the purpose of discarding them um, I already have the clubs flush so I'm gonna discard my spades and I'm going to discard again. It doesn't really matter. I just need to discard the spades. And then this is a winning flush already. So we are doing flushes right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna be do, doing flushes forever. Um, so again, with the painted deck here, because we have the only the four joker slots, um, the extra hand size, the plus two hand size, is help making it easier to make our hands. Flushes are not hard to make, so we are already good on that. We want to reach for something better, we want to reach for something higher scoring. So in the end game, what I'm thinking about is maybe uh, we'll switch to straight flushes, maybe we'll switch to flush houses, um, or even uh, we could go full houses or four of a kind. Uh, flushes are not forever. And so here with the Droll Joker, again, Eternal, I'm not into it. Uh, do I want an Eternal Ride the Bus? You know, one of these sort of uh, scaling Jokers. You know, maybe you get this up to uh, 30, 40 molt or something like that. Um, I think I'm not into this. I think you wanna have at most one scaling Joker. And so we already have the scaling castle. Uh, I'm not wanting to have the ride the bus and the castle here. Um, in the end, X Molt is gonna be the thing that does it. So we've demonstrated in the past couple of runs here. Uh, if you get the X Molt, that's it. That's the thing that actually wins. And this can kind of sustain you until you get to that point. Uh, ride the bus is really what it's meant for are these lower scoring hands. So for if you're doing high card or pair or two pair, then this will support those hands that don't have very high base molt. But if we have the extra hand size from the painted deck, if we know we can consistently make four of a kind and you know flush houses or whatever it is end game, then I no longer need this uh, ride the bus. And so 
I'm not going to take it, and I'm going to suggest that you exercise some restraint as well. All right. Uh, unfortunately, the banana is still with us, so we're going to have to play it with the banana. I want to discard here some clubs looking for, you know, I already have spades showing up here. So here's that again, demonstrating the power of the painted deck. Here I have my flush already locked in, no risk at all for discarding these five cards. Uh, two more clubs here, discarded, and then the flush. Uh, that flush giving me 2,200 points. We already said that's enough to beat, you know, here the small blind and the big blind, 1,000, 1,500. Uh, it is also enough to beat the boss here, assuming that we don't have any debuffed cards. Um, also noting with the castle, if your cards are debuffed, they don't count when you discard them. Uh, okay, we have some options here. I could now... I, you know, I'm really hoping that we lose the banana at some point, and then in that case, maybe what I'm looking to do is replace it with uh, the Droll Joker here with the plus 10 molt. Um, I am interested in the seed money. I think, you know, you can survive, you can be perfectly fine with just the $25 saved and then the $5 interest, though... You know, typically what I like to have is I like to have the one or two value generating jokers. And with the painted deck, since we're missing a joker slot, we can't do that as much. And so I need to be getting my income from some other source. And I think the seed money is going to be a great way to do that. Though we do have to be a little bit careful here. We have some tension. We want to save up to $50 but we don't want to you know, get outpaced by the anti-scoring thresholds. And so even now we know we can do 2000, but when we get to the next anti, the next round, right away we gotta be able to do uh, 3200. So here, rather than save for interest, I'm going to pick up the Droll Joker. This is also hedging against, if we lose the banana, we have a backup here. Um, am I interested in anything else? Um, I'm going to try not to. I'm going to prioritize jokers first because they're going to give you the most score per dollar. And then we'll invest in some other things, some booster packs later. All right, so I need to discard club cards and then maybe play diamonds. You know, here if I look at the deck, uh, all of... The spades are debuffed because I played those, but the diamonds and hearts are clean. So I'm going to go for, I guess, hearts. All right, since I've got those hearts already. Uh, here with the debuffed ace, we can see that it doesn't work, but the uh, regular clubs do. Uh, we got the hearts. Um, I don't need to discard here. So let's go ahead and play the flush. All right, 3,300. So for the next round, 3,200, that's going to be enough. Um, here we've got the option for uh, the uh, certificate here. It gives us random seals. Or, you know, we haven't discovered this one yet. Maybe, you know, on these higher stakes, it's a little bit risky. I would not suggest taking this at this point. Um, we do have the satellite. This is one of those where, you know, as you're picking up different planet cards, this is also retroactive. This is counting any planet cards that you've picked up previously. Um, then this is going to give you money. So it's going to take a little while for this to become online. And then once it's online, then, you know, we might be needing to sell it for scoring jokers. So uh, in most runs, I would say this is a great pickup, but with only the four joker slots, this is not what we're looking for right now. So knowing that I have enough score to beat the next round, I'm just going to hold for interest. 
looking for this is huge for us the ability to level up our full house and so with the three levels in the full house we can get over this 4800 here even without the drill joker uh, we don't need to play a flush if we're playing a leveled up full house instead let's give that a try all right so with the leveled up full house uh what flavor full house do i want i want to throw away my clubs and maybe i'll just go for whatever the higher cards are so maybe we'll do this Um, I guess also a straight flush is perfectly viable if I have like a, a straight flush in diamonds, you know, just missing the seven of diamonds here. Um, I'm going to keep looking for more clubs. So there are some clubs. There's clubs. Uh, here's an eight. The question is, do I want to hold the eights potentially for the queens and eights full house? Or do I want to throw away the eights and sort of greedily build up the castle? Um, I think, you know, with the help of the painted deck plus two hand size, I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to be fine as far as finding a full house. Worst case scenario, we play one garbage hand and it costs us one dollar. The difference being here I get plus three chips on my castle. All right, so we didn't get the full house. That's perfectly fine. I said, let's see here. We've got two tens, two queens, two kings. So normally, you know, if you didn't have the extra hand size, you would have to, you know, commit to a single two pair. So here's kings and queens looking for either because we have the extra hand size. I think it is safe to hold the tens as well. Nice. Kings and queens. So we know that one is worth 5,600. You know, even without the Droll Joker, if we play the face cards, we get 5,600 for that. Is not enough to beat the wall. The wall is going to take two of those. Maybe that's not something we can do. And so if that's not something that we can do, what are we doing instead? Um, I think we go buffoon pack first so that we can have more information before deciding on these jokers here. Uh, more information coming in the form of we've got bull gives us 50 chips right now. Could get bigger, but you know, we've already got the castle going here. Um, I think if I had more, if I had a really impactful scoring joker right now, then I would take the bull, you know, and sort of invest in the ability to grow it in the future. Um, but for now, I need more stability and the bull is not going to give me sort of the short term stability. Um, also, I've said this before on my plasma deck video, uh, the way that I think about the bull, the bull is not a payoff for, you know, getting money, like getting money is already its own payoff. What the bull is, the bull is an income joker. The bull is what allows you to save money. If all of my scoring is coming from this bull, then I don't have to spend money on other scoring. Though, you know, currently where we are, we're at right now, early on in the run, early on, uh, you know, not having any value generating joker slots, this bull is not gonna be what we're looking for. So maybe, uh, you know, this swashbuckler would give us another, you know, plus seven molt or something like that. I'm going to go astronomer because I know we have a celestial pack. And then now that celestial pack's free, looking for full houses. Full houses just like this. Some consideration for, do I want to go full houses for the short-term scoring, or do I want to invest in the four of a kind in the far future? Um, since we're up against the wall here specifically, and we really need uh, the scoring, I think we need this. I think we need the earth right now. And do I possibly want to trade in my Droll Joker? Now my Droll Joker is incompatible with my full house. 
you know, I might get to a point where I upgrade my full house into a flush house. But then if I'm playing flush houses, plus 10 is not gonna be a big deal either. And so I'm gonna go for, even though it costs us money, I'm gonna go for the turtle bean here. The, you do get sort of diminishing returns on your hand size. I think, uh, you know, 10 is the best hand size. Uh, where you sort of you're able to discard five and at the same time hold five and then each additional card on top of that Doesn't really matter right each additional card. You're still only able to discard five at a time You're still only able to play five at a time. And so this isn't necessarily super big for us But it does give us you know this card selection capability And so we've demonstrated with the castle in the past couple of rounds here we get to a point where, oh, I only have one club to discard. I only have two clubs to discard. Now with the bean, it'll be at least a little bit easier to find all of those extra clubs. Do I want the blank voucher? Blank voucher, remember the upgraded version of this gives you an extra joker slot. That would be life changing on the painted deck, though it will hurt our savings. I think the safe thing to do is focus on sort of the short-term survivability. So we said before with the, uh, you know, with the green stake, with the higher anti-scaling, it's really once we get into anti-4 and anti-5, that's when you're going to start having trouble. And so you want to make sure your anti-4 is safe and then you can start worrying about you know maybe getting more value and so i unfortunately i have to pass on the blank voucher i really need to pick up some more scoring than just these two we're already in anti three i need more scoring though with the upgraded full house we can win in two so what do two full houses look like we've already done it right we have the extra hand size so let's see here, let's, do I want to discard these clubs? Hurting my ability to make the full house. I'm going to hold on to one ace just to be safe. And then maybe if we draw other cards, I will feel better about discarding it. But, you know, let's not get ourselves killed here this early. All right, so we're to get the here two and three i'm gonna throw away five i don't need seven and eight i don't need show me another triple all right so we get did get the triple in eights if i wanted to i could discard it to upgrade the castle um i think i'm not going to do that you know there is some risk associated with that i'm gonna play here's one full house and if I happen to draw some clubs, then I can discard after. All right, and I said two of those would work. So here I've got the eights and the tens here. I can safely discard one more club. Or I could play four of a kind. It is actually worse than my full house all right that full house we know is worth 7,000 points uh, we know the next round is 9,000 points so I'm still in that same kind of two full house territory uh, we got ride the bus coming back around marble joker incompatible with our full house here uh, this is another one of those you know you take it maybe early and you get your stone cards value and then you sell it later so it being eternal is kind of a big bummer, to be honest. Uh, do I want the extra hand here from the grabber? Extra hand is an extra dollar. Um, we already have the seed money voucher. So I do want to try to save up to $50. So I'm going to pass on all of this. Our scoring needs are already satisfied. Do I want to try to pick up a holographic joker? You know, if each joker slot is premium, do we want to get an addition joker would be, you know, especially good. Mostly what I'm looking for, I said already, uh, we want to get as much X-Mult as we can. So rare jokers, 
If this were a rare Joker tag for X Molt, that could be a good gamble. If this were a Polychrome tag, that could be a good gamble. Uh, negative tag, not necessarily worth it on other decks. You know, if we're playing on black deck and we already have uh, six Joker slots, we don't need another random Joker slot. We need a better Joker is what we need. But on the painted deck with so few Joker slots, then the negative tag is more worth it. All right, looking for diamonds to discard. So, you know, here's a nine. Um, if I'm already throwing away one nine, you know, maybe there's some consideration for throwing away two nines. If I'm gonna throw away a three, might as well throw away two threes. Um, I know I'm going to need the two full houses, right? Pretty sure two full houses. Even if I level up the castle, it's still gonna be two full houses. So let's go ahead and play the full house that I have, the aces and sixes. Okay, and then now we have more room here for discarding. So we got the eights, uh, we got the fours and sevens already. So we're good, we, we got it locked up here. Looking for diamonds to discard. Uh, wait, did I discard an eight that I needed? Oh, well, here's our full house. All right, we've lost the banana, finally. Success, uh, which means now we are looking for some additional scoring. Um, the full house 12 base, that banana was a times two, a little bit more than a times two. All right, $41 here. Do I want bull if it's holographic and eternal? It was eternal last time, right? I think now, with it being holographic, I think that's gonna move the needle for us. I think that is going to be worth it. But maybe before I do that, let's take a look at the free celestial pack. Free celestial pack giving us earth. This is huge. All right, we are off to a good start here. You know, it, it doesn't look like it because we only have the one scoring joker and it's kind of medium scoring joker here. Um, but I think we'll be fine. Uh, if we go here the next round, 13,000. Um, I think if we take the bull here, and this is, uh, you know, this is plus 10 molt, you know, a little bit less than what we were getting from the banana. Um, instead of our full houses being 7,000 points. Well, we did get another earth. I think this is still two full houses. If I had to guess, I would say that's two full houses. If I wanted an extra dollar here, I could get an extra dollar from the Uranus, but I think I'm going to hold on to it, blocking the duplicates. All right, uh, I could get seven bucks. All right, so I'm looking for discarding diamonds. And... I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw away the Jack of Diamonds. Okay, four, six, there's it. I'm gonna keep the King of Diamonds. Um, I'm gonna throw away the Queen. So I've got all these pairs. Uh, for my full house here, I'm gonna start with the Tens. Okay, that was more than I was expecting. Uh, I was expecting to sort of barely win in, in two. This is a little bit better than I was expecting. Cool. Um, I don't need here these diamonds. Do I want to keep or throw the nine? I've got uh, eight left. I've got another nine left. I've got two kings left. I think we will do uh, the throw away the king and keep the nine. That's kind of the safe thing to do. All right, so we got the nines and we got the eights here. Uh, about 9,500 for that. 
All right here, this is 18,000. So we can do this with two hands, two full houses, one hand type this round. So two full houses, we're good. And this is incredible here. This is, we've got the two celestial packs, the free celestial packs. If you're not a believer in astronomer, you better be by now. All right, let's take a look. Uh, celestial pack, let's go small one first. E this is, I'm not going down to uh, Venus. I may go up. Neptune is worth more than my, you know, with two Neptune cards, already straight flush is worth more than full house. So, you know, keep that in mind. It's never too late to pivot. Uh, Celestial so pack again. Here again here, do I want to go Neptune for straight flushes as a pivot? Uh, is four of a kind going to be an easier pivot from full houses, right? So I haven't done any deck modifications yet. I haven't used any tarot cards yet. Um, the thing that makes full houses happen is the same thing that makes four of a kind happen, is having more duplicates. And so between these, I'm leaning more towards Mars as a backup. All right, here's that synergy that I was talking about. We've got uh, Eternal Joker Bull here combined with madness. So, you know, let's say, what's the worst case scenario? If I take this madness, uh, let's say it destroys my castle. My castle, which is currently giving me 120 chips. Uh, my full house is that much, 165, plus 88 here, plus, you know, another 30 cards from the uh, chips on the cards themselves. So this castle is 50% right now. 50% of my score is a castle, which means this madness, even in the unlucky scenario, we've been doing all this work to level up our castle. Even if it destroys our castle, we still have the same score that we had before. And so maybe that is an incentive for taking the madness. Um, and since we're playing on black stake for the first time and we're demonstrating these eternals and kind of how they work, you know, it would be a missed opportunity if we didn't go in on madness. So let's give that a try, which means I need to, um, am I getting rid of the bean or I'm getting rid of the astronomer? Astronomer has kind of done its thing. I'm going to get rid of the bean. Um, here, I should also say about the madness, uh, when it says destroy a random joker, because it can't destroy eternals, it, when it rolls, when it randomly selects, it excludes the eternals from the selection. So this says 50% chance castle, 50% chance astronomer. Okay, uh, do I want the grabber? Cost me some interest, but the extra hand you know, maybe with the extra plus two hand size of the painted deck, I could get in a situation of playing three full houses. Is not what I want to be doing, but I'm capable of doing. All right, let's give that a try. All right, so like I said, that's the worst case scenario. We lost our castle, our 128 chips on our castle, but we still have uh, 9,000 for a full house. Um, also, uh, you know, what makes the castle so good of all of the, uh, you know, scaling jokers, you know, whether it's the plus molt or whether it's the plus chips, those other ones ride the bus, green joker, square joker, they reward you for playing certain kinds of hands. Runner rewards you for playing straights. The castle rewards you for discarding, it rewards you for doing something you're already doing anyway. And so it's free. It grows for free. It doesn't cost you any money for hands that you play. All right, so now I don't care about suits. The only thing that I care about are full houses and potentially the higher full houses are going to be worth more points. So let's optimize for full houses. Uh, we've got two, three, four, jack and nine. We've got sixes and queens developing here. Uh, we got the kings. 
do I want to discard here? I got two kings, two queens, two sixes. Remember, this is, we're only allowed one hand type. And so if we discard and we don't get our full house, then we die, then we lose. So what is the thing that's gonna maximize our full house chance here? Do I want to discard the sixes? I have five chances to get four either king or queen, or here I've got only four chances to get either six cards, king or queen or six, or potentially some other triple, I guess is technically possible. I think we keep the three pair on the painted deck. All right, we quite literally dodged a bullet there with the full house. This uh, play only one hand type, you are allowed to play other hand types as garbage, though they won't score. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes they don't need to score necessarily. All right, between these, we've drawn the third five here. Do I want to play this full house or do I want to try to wait for a higher full house? You know, that one was worth 9,900, but if we have you know, these are non-face cards. It's gonna be worth less points. I think this doesn't do it. All right, the difference is 25 chips times however much molt, uh, times 30. Uh, the difference uh, could be less than $900 or 900 points. That was 9,000. All right, so you know, for everyone who's keeping score at home, uh, 9,000 points for a sort of middle full house. The next blind is going to be 18,000. So again, we're two hands. Two hands is gonna do it. And that's often the situation that you run into with the painted deck where you've got less scoring jokers. So you've got, you know, what is it, uh, times, Sorry, less scoring jokers means you have to play more hands. Uh, this is huge for us, the money tree. Now our uh, interest goes all the way up to $20 max if we're holding on to $100. Okay, how do we navigate this? We said always bet on banana, so that's step number one. Step number two is, I don't want madness to destroy my banana. My banana is already doing a lot more than the madness. So we're getting rid of madness. Do I want the vampire? One, number one, it's X molt. Number two, it is scaling, increasing amount of X molt. Doesn't do anything right now, but like we demonstrated with the obelisk, uh, that end game scoring is huge. So with this, this is already a winning lineup. We, we're done, we've won. Now it's just having fun, I guess. Here's Earth, looking for another Earth, but I wouldn't be mad if we didn't get it. We have been, we've been rolling hot. This is very lucky to get level seven by now. Uh, let's see here. As a backup, we said maybe uh, straight flushes, later on straight flushes. You know, there's nothing that sort of, I, we don't have to play full houses. Like I said, already two, Neptune cards, level three straight flush is comparable to a full house, even level seven. So it's not too late to pivot. Though I think full houses in general are just easier to play, right? Uh, we don't need standard packs. Let's look for that full house. E fives, maybe. So here's again that three pair situation, very common on the painted deck. Here's another three pair situation. Um, I'm gonna prioritize the higher cards. Aces with the jacks here. Uh, this is gonna be 18,000, right? Cause we know with madness on 1.5 X, that was 9,000. This is twice as big as madness. So this will be at least uh, 18,000 though now the bull is slightly bigger and we also got this slightly bigger uh, full house here uh, Okay, uh, more celestial pack looking for it's a jumbo. So show me 
Uh, Earth is what it's called. Earth, just like that. Uh, do I want this money tree? Not yet. You know, we still haven't even gotten to the 50 interest yet. Do I want the Arcana pack? I think I'm good on my ability to make full houses. This 27,000, now that we just got this upgraded full house, I think we're good there. Though there is consideration for, consider this, consider the vampire. The way that you upgrade this is with card enhancements. And so maybe let's try that. Let's go Emperor for two random ones. Uh, temperance, I don't hate. That's completely fine. Um, and then maybe Arcana Pack for uh, Temperance, or sorry, um, Hierophant or Empress would be the best. Uh, not really what I was looking for. We do have the option of, I can go Strength. I can turn, let's say, Jacks into Queens. That'll make it easier for us to get our full houses. Let's take a look at the boss. This is the one where, you know, play or discard, you always draw three. So for us, since we're always discarding five cards anyway, this is kind of a stinker, but I think we can survive it. In which case, uh, I'm gonna go for the vampire value. I don't need the strength for the consistency because I have the plus hand size for the consistency. What I need is the extra scoring is the thing that I'm missing. And so I want to do Emperor. Let's use the devil to get out of the way. And we got a chariot here. And I have to make this decision, you know, do I want the bonus here from the chariot or do I want the bonus from the vampire? And I think uh, long term, putting it on the vampire is gonna be better. Though, you know, when we get to the end game, maybe it's better to have the, uh, the steel card. And that's it. Let's go to the next round. Uh, do I want a spectral pack? Um, I want the voucher that's in the shop, so I can't take a skip. All right, we've got queens and fours. We haven't drawn our enhanced, uh, you know, gold king there. So let's do this. Let's see here. This was worth about, uh, you know, 2000 25,000, so maybe with another 20%, that'll do it. Sorry, I should have checked for the ability to make a flush house with the clubs, though maybe, you know, our full house is already big-ish. That's what I should have done. No, for sure, I should have looked for a flush house there. All right, um, we have the bull is growing here. The 140 chips is slightly less than this 200 here. So bull is maybe giving us, uh, I don't know, times 1.7 molt is what it's doing. This is a times 1.7 currently. Um, I do need this voucher. I want the money in general, but also it just happens to be good with the bull as well. Let's spend looking for upgrading the vampire i think is very possible to do here uh, so for example we can upgrade with a chariot here we can make a glass card i'm going to take the chariot because if i make a glass card i'm sort of relying on the ability to draw it whereas if i make the chariot i can find it later standard packs do have a chance of giving you enhanced cards and say oh, maybe i want uh, a standard pack combos with the vampire standard pack any card will be a repeat and so any card will help make full houses so let's go standard pack our interest goes up to a hundred dollars but we don't necessarily need to be too greedy uh, let's take the enhanced four and then now in future standard packs, I may be a little bit more picky, but you know, for now, we'll just pick up the enhanced one. All right here, uh, player discard, always three. We have the lucky four and the gold king. So how about let's throw away a five. And we could throw away another five. 
and we could throw away another five and we could consider playing random garbage playing one card and then drawing three uh, I'm not convinced that that's necessary so let's go queen and then let's play a pair of nines let's think about a flush house is possible let's just take a look here um, we can even since we already have the extra four we can do queens with fours flush house and then let's take a look here so flush house that's not as much as my full house though if we go into you know the collection here we can see with the planet cards this is two molt and 25 chips compared to this is three molt and 40 chips and so you know long term this is 50 percent more molt 50 percent more chips put those two things together you know when you multiply 50 percent and another 50 percent this is about two times as big long term flush houses are going to be about two times as big as uh regular full houses if we can get there and it's already anti five and so we haven't had a whole lot of deck manipulation yet we haven't been taking the arcana packs because we've been saving our money for the seed money voucher uh, I'm gonna do this and it's going to be less than 36,000 but it does give me the option to invest in flush houses in the future keep it open-ended and then here's another easy full house here and so with that we know uh, our full house is worth about what is that 40,000 40,000 for a regular full house uh, 30,000 for the flush house with a 40,000 full house I know I can beat the next round the next bit round we go and the next one is 32,000 no problem one shot and then the next next uh, ante we can two shot it we did have the blank voucher come back around. Now I am interested in this. Let's go standard pack first. That's going to give us more information before we open the uh, mega pack there. Um, let's see. Do I want, this is an enhanced nine. I already have my enhanced four. I've got the five fours. Do I want an extra nine? I think for now, yes. And it happens to be gold. That's good. Mega pack. Now with that information, I know maybe I'm looking to make more nines or maybe still more fours. So let's see here, what kind of options do we have? We can go devil on my flush house is queens, so maybe I want to have more queens, or maybe here I've got the four of clubs. I want to have more four of clubs since I have the three queen of clubs. So let's go make it gold, make it enhanced, and then make a copy. And the thing that I want to remove are going to be fives. Let's get rid of fives because threes can turn into fours, fives cannot. All right, team. Now we're cooking. Claim. We're cooking. Any full house will do it. Doesn't have to be a flush house. So maybe let's look for uh, fours and sixes. Or we still have the gold king. So maybe we're looking for the king. Maybe we're looking for the fancy nine. Um, Let's see here, uh, if I throw away these, I've got, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the jacks. So before we've been doing this kind of like three pair thing. Now I've got more enhanced cards. I'm looking for the more enhanced cards. I don't need two full houses, I just need one full house. So let's discard here. Uh, we've got the enhanced nines here. We've got the enhanced king here. So maybe, 
you know, we're not going to get there on the king. So let's do this. I'm going to play the king now. Uh, by the way, with the vampire, it doesn't have to score. If I play this as a high card, then the vampire will remove the enhancement. Uh, now I've got the fours and nines. I can go ahead and ship them. I will look for my other four. We did get the other four. Do I want to play the regular fours? This is definitely enough scoring and then save these for money. Let's do that. And then we can always upgrade the vampire later when we actually need it. All right, uh, bull here is now up to 167. Uh, we've got uh, a buffoon pack, you know, option here to pick up more jokers. Am I looking to, what's my weakest joker right now? My weakest joker is the astronomer giving me value. You know, the vampire is not as big as the banana, obviously. Banana is always going to trump. And so let's go, even though I'm not quite at the interest cap yet, let's still go buffoon pack, looking for more X molt. If we don't see X molt, maybe what we can do is, well, here's the flower pot. Diamonds, clubs, hearts, and spades. I hate this one. This is tough. You know, a flush is a hand. Uh, oops, all different is a non-hand. Though, technically our full houses are worth more points than a flush house anyway. And with a full house with five different cards, you know, how easy is it to get five different suits? Generally hard. With the painted deck, the plus two hand size, maybe not impossible. And so some other consideration, maybe we take the Space Joker. So Space Joker is going to be another value generating Joker, scaling Joker. You can use this for a couple rounds to level up your hand and then ditch it later. Uh, is this going to be better than, more direct than the Astronomer? Astronomer just gives us money. But the, uh, you know, the vouchers, the money tree already gives us money. And so I don't need the more money from the astronomer. I don't need the discount from the astronomer. And maybe better than the sort of short term, you know, chance based scaling here. We'll take the flower pot. This is now guaranteed our uh, scoring future. We've got X mult, X mult, X mult. Now we're good. I said we were good before, but now like. You really believe me. We're good. We're good. All right. Uh, I don't need more hand size. Two is good. Two is enough. Standard pack may be looking for more enhancements. Enhancements like a lucky card, a gold seal card. Happens to be a three, which, as you know, is not a four, but it does have the potential to become a four. So... I'm into this. I'm fine with that. All right, uh, do I need to reroll the boss here? Can I score one 32,000 uh, full house? Absolutely. No problem. Uh, what am I looking for here? I'm looking for, let's see here. I've got extra nines and I've got extra fours and I've got extra fives. Nines, fours, and five. Uh, nine, fours, and threes. Sorry, extra threes. So five. There. Nines, fours, maybe threes. Nines, fours, maybe threes. Nines and fours, or eights and fours, or here's a three. Uh, I'm going to discard one more time looking for um, another gold card for the money. Instead, we get the lucky card, which is perfectly fine. So here is with the flower pot, that is my full house. If I wanted to, I could even do it this way. It's worth a little bit more points, not that it matters. Ah, 200,000. Let's do a quick 
anti check here. Boss is 90,000 doubled to 180,000. We've got enough. Assuming the boss doesn't mess up one of our jokers. And you know, that's another drawback of the painted deck only having the four joker slots. If you get one of these bosses that messes with your jokers, uh, you know, let's say uh, you're debuffed until one joker sold, that could suck. Uh, Crimson Heart, one random joker disabled, that could suck. Let's hope we don't get randomly killed by the final boss. Uh, we've got a ton of money here, so we'll go High Priestess first. Flush House. That's our backup hand, maybe. Though, with the Flower Pot, um, this makes our regular Full House better than our Flush House every time. And so there is the possibility, you know, in five, six rounds left, we could replace the Flower Pot with something else, more generic, x -Molt. But for now, that flush house is not going to be worth. Here, Earth is an easy pickup. Here we've got, uh, we don't have the Earth. So do I want to take a backup or do I want to skip in case of a fool? I will skip. I guess... Technically, there's a chariot, which I'm going to use to feed the vampire, and so the fool doesn't matter. Um, this is the last opportunity for the blank voucher. Now we can afford it. Before we couldn't afford it, now we can. And we'll save our money for the bull and for the continued interest. Play only one hand, and it better be a banger. So, two, five, eight... Jack, Ace, I have extra nines in the deck. Okay, I have fours. I already threw away one Ace. Might as well keep throwing away Aces. Eight, and since I drew the fours here, I'm gonna throw the sixes. Okay, so we've got already, we've got nines and tens, and it's flower pot compatible. So now if I wanted to, I could Discard these, looking for my gold cards. Didn't get there on the gold cards. Do I want to use the steel card to upgrade my vampire? That's an interesting question, right? So this is gonna be the first one that you use is big. You know, the difference between, uh, you know, one and 1 1.2 is 20% boost here. But now the difference between Two and 2.2, that's only a 10% boost for this chariot card, if I use this chariot card. Or is it better with the painted deck, you know, to hold more steel cards, especially since I have extra nines, since I have an extra nine of hearts? I'm gonna make the steel card, and I think that's going to be better uh, in the late game for us, as like a long-term plan rather than this short-term gain here with the vampire demonstrating here this 300,000 so if we look at this 300,000 and if we take away you know say the crimson whatever it is boss disables the flower pot and we don't get the times three this would still be worth slightly more than a hundred thousand we could still beat that boss with two full houses even if it is disabling our x mult here even if i have to sell a joker even if i have to sell the vampire to the verdant leaf boss all right do i want to replace the flower pot with maybe the more stable more consistent ramen ramen which you know decreases if we discard cards um i think with this particular deck construction, I think the flower pot is going to be better, though we should consider. So flower pot is not compatible with a full house, or sorry, a flush house. Right now our full house is bigger than our flush house, but let's say this was switched. Let's say it was flush house, 240 chips, full house, 180 chips. Well then, you know, the 240 is about 50% bigger, so, 50% bigger and then times two is the same as a times three from the flower pot. 
if this were switched, if uh, the flush house was 240 and the full house was 180, then the ramen would actually be better. But uh, with what we're currently looking at, we've got the flower pot. Uh, do I want the sun here? The sun is going to give me a suit change in an emergency. And so if I need to, in an emergency, activate my flower pot, maybe the sun is what helps me do that. Um, I don't think we need that technology. Let's go standard pack, looking for more enhanced cards. Uh, so for example, here's a four of clubs, or we also get the option for a steel card. And I said, okay, on the painted deck, extra hand size, extra held in hand cards, the steel card will help me beat the final boss if my x molt jokers get disabled. So I think I want the steel card. It's not a nine, it's not a four, but it is steel. And I'm not going to use the vampire on the steel card. Uh, Spectro pack, who knows? Something wacky maybe? Uh, we could, this is exactly what you wanna see. So on the painted deck with only four joker slots, what I want is an extra joker slot. What I, you know, right now it costs me I have the two hand size, plus two hand size from the painted deck. This only cost me minus one hand size. So this is exactly what we want to have. Or we have this option of we could get the blue seal. You know, we've been using the gold cards and you would get money and also, you know, some random planet. Obviously the pick is the ectoplasm. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, though maybe for demonstration purposes, I say this all the time for demonstration purposes, um, for tutorial purposes, ectoplasm is powerful, perhaps overpowered on the painted deck specifically. I'm going to skip the ectoplasm. This is the pick. Let's see what happens. Can we still win without the powerful ectoplasm? How do we proceed from here? Uh, we got our hundred dollars. Int uh, so we have maxed out interest. Let's just keep saving our money for interest. Uh, 56,000, we know that we can do that. We already know with everything online, we can hit 300,000. If I take away this times three, I can still hit 100,000, no problem. That's one, two, three. All of these are fine. No repeat hands types. I can go ahead and just play the one full house. This run is done. We've got it in the bag. All right, we've got, uh, it was an extra king, right? The extra steel king. So maybe do something like this. Or actually what I'm going to do, I'm gonna throw away the jack, keeping ace and queen of different suits. Because, you know, if I'm trying to do this flower pot thing, Let's try to diversify different suits here. Like I know you can't play these two at the same time, um, but you know, mix up the suits here. Okay, we got an extra queen of clubs we don't need. We got an extra king here. We got three kings left in the tank. We got more aces, more nines and fours. Extra three, right? We have an extra three. So throw away the eight. Uh, I'm going to throw away the queens and do I want to throw away kings and aces or just kings or just single king. Let's do this. Let's do that. Show me aces, nines and fours or threes. There's threes and aces and fours. Okay. Uh, do I need the extra four of hearts? I don't, maybe. I need spades right now. I need uh, three of spades or four of spades or nine of spades. Okay, so I have three outs with the flower pot. I don't actually need the flower pot. I just need any uh, full house. That's not a full house, you jerk. That's gonna cost me a dollar. That's rude as heck. 
All right, uh, that's gonna cost me another dollar. Do I want to, you know, maybe do something like this? I've got king left, three nines, two threes. I've got the most fours left of anything. Let's do this, threes, queen, 10. Actually, it doesn't matter. Bull giving me plus 200 chips for whatever hand. I guess it doesn't need to be a full house. So if it doesn't need to be a full house, I could just play a flush and get the money and get the uh, steel cards. Well, that's kind of boring. Oh. Well, okay, now I'm invested again. That's kind of exciting. All right, we've got uh, $20 interest now. Um, I'm going to take the crystal ball for the extra consumable slot. I'm going to upgrade my earth. Now I'm looking for fool. So if I'm looking for fool, I have a better chance with the bigger pack. Show me a fool. There it is, it's me. Uh, do I want an extra earth card or do I want the extra $20 or I've got strength to make an extra four an extra queen or an extra king or I've got lovers here lovers with the wild card can be used as any suit so you can use it to count uh, for the flower pot action all very very good things what's gonna give me I guess with the lovers doesn't work with the vampire, right? I'm gonna go for the earth here. I think the earth is gonna be worth more than the $20. Let's say you use the $20, you reroll four times. How many earth cards are gonna show up in four shop rerolls? Maybe not enough. How many jokers are gonna show up in four shop rerolls that are better than the jokers that I have? Then I don't need the money. All right, Arcana looking for another fool. Well, money or suit changers. So I did end up not with a ton of hearts, but a few extra hearts and a few extra clubs. And so maybe it's harder for me to find these diamonds and these spades here. Something to keep in mind when thinking about the flower pot. Do I want to create more diamonds to uh, you know balance those out? Or do I want the money to grow my bull here and sort of give me a backup scoring even when my flower pot is not active let's do that i don't think the star is going to help super much i don't think it's going to matter super much there all right we've got the celestial pack mega celestial pack we get 20 dollars interest so we got to play instead of skip um here are some kings we can start looking for threes and fours and maybe an extra nine. Uh, let's go threes and fours. Actually, since I said we're limited on diamonds, if the thing that I wanted to do, if I wanted to maximize, you know, making the flower pot happen, I should keep diamonds because those are the ones that are hard to find. I should throw away clubs and I have an extra, not an extra three of hearts, but I do have an extra not an extra four spades it's the kings i have extra i'm gonna keep the steel one and i'm gonna throw away the king of hearts and if i get into an emergency i can use the steel king all right here we go we got basically what we wanted we got the nine and four and we've got it's not locked up yet completely but we'll get there I don't need the steel card. Here we've got the threes. I want to play the threes for the money and then also for the vampire value here. So we'll go ahead and play. And here are those, uh, that full house. Or maybe, do I have more gold cards? I do have the four here. So let's discard looking for that four and we got it look rewarded
All right, 500,000 points. Uh, that's definitely enough to beat the final boss. You know, if we get the debuff Joker and this is worth a third as much, I think that's still gonna be fine. How is he gonna find a way to screw it up this time? Let's go pick up a random tarot card just because. Uh, standard packs will go small one first. Do I want more queens here? Do I want a glass card? Uh, I already have two three of spades. Do I want another three in general? And it happens to be spades. I'll take it. It's glass. Standard pack. Uh, I would love another three. I won't say no to a steel card. Steel card is good with extra hand size. Also, it happens to be a queen. I guess we don't have any extra queens yet. Now, I've got a ton of money here. I could save for this bull here. The bull is giving me two chips per dollar. So that's 20 chips per $10. Uh, this 300 chips is finally bigger than my full house. So this is a times two joker right now. After all that work, leveling up the bull, saving all this money, this is a times two joker. Question, is re-rolling worth you know, the bull goes down, but maybe I get a, what do I get? Maybe I get a better joker. Could replace what I have here, except 3x molt, you know, 2.5x molt, 3x uh, molt. My jokers are not going to be getting better. There's no sense re-rolling for jokers. Uh, planet cards, am I re-rolling for planet cards? I'm already at level 11. So one it's gonna be rare that I find the earth that I'm looking for. And then two, even if I do find it, it's not gonna benefit me that much. Not gonna make that big a difference. Maybe tarot cards for the upgrading the vampire. I think we don't need to reroll at all. Great. I need to win in one hand. I need to win in one full house with maybe some extra threes in the deck, maybe with some extra queens in the deck. Uh, there's some queens. Um, I wanna try not to play the steel card if I can. So maybe, I'm gonna plan on not playing the queens, in which case I'm still looking for threes and fours. E so in the full deck here, we got extra king is steel. I want to try not to play. Extra nine is also steel. I want to try not to play. Let's still go for the fours and threes, in which case discarding all of these or maybe discarding. We already discarded one queen. Might as well discard another queen. Uh, didn't get there on the full house. So let's play a pair. Man, that stupid bull is going to be worth, you know, 20,000 points already. That's no fun. Uh, we could get a nine. We could get a six. We could get a three. We've got two nines left because we've already thrown away some nines. If I wanted to have the best chance of getting my full house, this is not going to score. But that's okay. The full house will score. Do I need this gold card or now, you know, since we're switching into the last three rounds here, now is the time that I want to upgrade my vampire. I think now's the time. We can afford the $3 for the upgrade on our vampire. You know, if you think about constellation, constellation, you have to use planet cards to upgrade your constellation. Here, $3 I'm spending to upgrade my vampire. Even without the flower pot, that is worth 200,000. Make note of that. All right, a buffoon pack. There's nothing really that I'm looking for. Maybe a negative could be spicy. All right, uh, if it's not X Molt, I don't need it. Um, here with the planet merchant, we get planets about twice as much. Um, since I'm not looking for Jokers, planet cards are actually, I'm interested. All right. 
Uh, Celestial Pack? Mm, didn't get the full house. That's fine. We already have our scoring needs met. Uh, Mega Arcana Pack. N very few tags, if any, are going to be worth skipping out on our interest here. Uh, we got Queens and Sixes. Though, you know, maybe those are not the cards that we have the most of. So let's go Queens and Sixes with nine. Sevens. Okay. Sevens are done. Uh, let's... We did an ace already. So maybe we'll do an ace. And I think I'm, you know, done with the sixes. What about twos? Let's do that. Since I have extra twos left, I'll throw away the sixes. It, king, jack, ten, nine, five, two, and four. Still looking for that full house with the queens and the nines. Maybe I could go for a three. Let's do this. Uh, the four for the vampire. Let's play it. And then hope to find queen, nines, or possibly extra threes. Here are my nines with my queens. And we've got the steel card. Perfect. Let's look at the boss. The bell forces one card to be selected. With the, you know, we talked about the bosses that would be bad, the bosses that mess with your jokers, since we have few jokers. This is the one that's less bad, uh, since we've got the extra hand size. Uh, the violet vessel, the purple one that, uh, you know, gives you is like the wall. You have the super high score that you need to reach is hard-ish. It's hard on the painted deck because the painted deck you know you have fewer joker slots um but this is probably one of the easier ones if not the easiest one for our current setup for our current build mega celestial pack looking for more uh full houses e not full houses but basically just garbage four of a kind is not meaningless but the rest of these are standard pack maybe more enhancements steel card i will take not in general but with our current setup on the painted deck with the extra hand size um and then that's it i'll pick up this pluto card you know since we have the extra money uh we can skip for money or I mean, we're, we're already done, right? This is a, uh, we're just doing the victory lap right now. Uh, threes and fours, maybe? Show me threes and fours. No. We already threw away an ace, right? We threw away some fives. We haven't thrown away a six yet. So maybe I'll do something like this. Threes and fours. We got threes and fours. Maybe one more discard. Uh, I don't need the steel cards, so I could just discard them. Uh, in which case, do I want to hold on to the eights? Could be. All right, we've got threes and eights for the money. Eternal Obelisk is not a terrible pick, though, you know, not right now for what we're doing. Uh, unenhanced cards, some consideration for an extra three or an extra nine, you know, extras of the cards I already have extras of. Uh, though with all of our threes being spades already, maybe that's something that I'm not interested in doing. Mega pack, we could get uh, here, it's a tarot card random tarot card has a chance of giving us uh more enhancements for a vampire we don't need so we're good uh queens here how many queens do i've got i've got plenty of queens it doesn't matter right it doesn't matter let's skip and let's just go 
And let's just do the bell. And let's not make it more complicated than it needs to be. Okay, threes and fours. That's the move. Possibly nines. Threes, fours, and nines. All of this stuff here, the tens, we'll keep for now. All right, tens we're done with. Threes, fours, and maybe queens we have extras of. Queens, and queens, kings, and aces we all have extra of. We've got three and four here, queens, and unfortunately we're losing a steel card. So maybe let's do this. Uh, instead of discarding, I'm going to play it to level up the vampire. I should have thrown away a three of spades there. You know, with consideration for the flower pot. If I really wanted to maximize score, if I was concerned about score, that would be the way to do it. Um, we've already got our full house here. If we wanted to, we could go queens and fours, and that would be it. Um, I'm going to try to go bigger, you know, because it's fun just to see the big number. And I know you guys get upset if I don't show you the big number. So let's play this getting rid of the steel card. Let's try not to score too many points. Then you won't get to see the big number. And so maybe we'll throw these away looking for diamonds, three or four of diamonds. There we go, now we've got it. Three of diamonds, even with the extra three bucks here. Uh, fun fact about the bull, you get your money first, and then the bull calculates its chips after. And so, you know, we could even go plus here, and plus here, and plus here. All right, show the kids at home the big number. Made it up to times three, the vampire, all these times three. And with that, the black stake, we unlocked the anaglyph deck. Uh, maybe we'll check that one out next time or eventually. All right, moving on next time to even higher stakes and potentially a new deck. All right, take care, everyone.